Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in and welcome back once again to the channel. Man, it's always an honor to have you stop by, man. I feel like we, we, we're supposed to be neighbors. You good? Man, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching Mr. J from. Man, I'm always humble when I stop by to drop a vlog. And like I told you, we are dropping vlogs every day now. I've made it a decision that we need to talk about issues affecting our continent. And uh, if this is your first time stopping by, they call me Mr. J. And uh, we are proudly motherland on Mr. J's reaction. I react to music, entertainment, politics, social life, anything that is coming out of motherland. I gotta give my own two cents in. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I want us to talk about um, the situation down south. And if you know about down south, you know I'm talking about South Africa. And uh, a couple of my South Africans buddies asking, like, yo, Mr. J, uh, you're dropping back to back uh, information about down south. And I'm saying, yes, because I realized that my brothers and sisters in South Africa, they're very small minded. So I'll keep using that word, small minded. Now, before we do get started, think about being part of the family. Do hit that subscribe button, smash that like. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming through, man. On this vlog, I want us to look at um, there's this. Thing that has been going on in in South Africa, that uh, there's this new brand of black South African politicians who have been promoting uh, an agenda which is actually contrary to what uh, the founding fathers of the ANC had in mind. Granted, um, times have changed and things have evolved, and uh, and it looks like now uh, these brainless empty vessels of black politicians who didn't go through the, the right path uh, are creating parties and pushing propagandas that only benefit them. Now I'm not going to be citing any politician, uh, I think that you guys already know, but uh, have you guys realized that um, for the past couple of years, it seems as if it's been difficult for any black African immigrant to move to South Africa and uh, create some kind of like a political party. Have you guys realized that? Have you guys also realized that uh, it seems as if if your name doesn't sound like uh, a South African name and you are black, most South African will think that you are Nigerian. Have you guys realized that? Uh, I just watched a video of a guy from Angola who was arrested on suspicions that he's Nigerian, although he's not Nigerian, he's Angolan. Uh, but I say all of that to say this, man. Um, it is my belief that um, these young politicians, these thugs in names of politicians, uh, are being promoted, are being paid to promote a narrative which, to them, they think that is a good narrative, but in essence, it is a disguise to distract them from what is really, really happening in that beautiful country, South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, I want us to talk about, um, there is a prominent guy he owns here. I think he's the leader of what we call the Referendum Party. Uh, this guy is not born in South Africa. Uh, he came from Britain and he moved to South Africa and he's been there for like maybe 20 years and of course he's white so our black South African politicians would not dare to talk anything or talk down on somebody like that uh, but this guy has been pushing an agenda and what is that agenda? self-independence, self-determination this guy has been working to ensure that um, a certain part of South Africa should seek for independence. Now this is what I will tell you. Um, he is white, he goes by the name Phil Greg, and this guy has been one of the most racist and straightforward guy that I've ever come across. Uh, one of you led me to check out this guy. And, uh, I've read a whole lot about him and his ideologies and his philosophies. It's uh, These are dangerous elements to the community, to that country. Now I don't know why, uh, our black South African politicians who have been very, very, very open about xenophobic messages online towards fellow black Africans, these same Africans who genuinely helped to help you guys liberate yourself from the grip and causes of appetite. 
Now, I want us to talk about this Phil Greg. Phil Greg is a, is a dangerous element to the South African society because what Phil Greg is promoting, and I know that, you know, Phil Greg looks like a Jewish descendant to me, and he has been promoting this idea of uh, letting a, a state, the Western Cape, to become an independent state. Let them decide on what they want to do and uh, how are they going about this. Um, there is currently something going on in that part of South Africa where the DA is granting uh, resident permits for Europeans who move into South Africa as much as they want. But the whole plan is this, the more they come into this area that we, we want independence for, the more they will vote for us. So Mr. Phil Greg tapped into uh, disgruntled Israelis, Jewish people who are who are tired of Netanyahu, Benjamin, and what is happening to the state of Israel and the Gaza situation, which they all see the they all see that they are staring down the barrel of a gun of Iran and Hezbollah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, I will not talk so much. I'm going to play this video. I want us to watch and listen to the message, and then I will come back and we discuss. Watch. This video is about why it's in the best interest of the Western Cape people to control their own borders. My name is Phil Craig and I'm the leader of the Referendum Party. We are fighting for a referendum on Cape independence which will place the Western Cape people in charge of their own destiny. As a party we are strongly non-racial and believe that no one should be discriminated against based on the colour of their skin. Non-racialism is a founding principle of the South African constitution, but sadly, in present day South Africa, this is a farce. Our country is deeply racialized, and national government is determined to implement race-based policy at every turn, and our society habitually tries to silence those who promote genuine non-racialism by calling them racist. I am a non-racialist, and long ago I made a decision that set me free. I decided that I couldn't care less if people wanted to call me racist. I'm not going to be bullied into silence by a mob who haven't worked out yet that they are the racists and not me. I will answer to God and to my conscience for my actions. But as for the mob, the louder they scream, the more I like it. It just means that my words have found their target. I say all of this because when I talk about the Western Cape's borders, a lot of people are going to get very upset. But it's time that we have this conversation. This is a conversation that's already taking place at dinner tables, brides, school functions, in bars, and at pretty much every other meeting place in the Western Cape. And it's now time for us to have this conversation in public. Even without the howls of racism, provincial migration is a difficult conversation because different groups of people have different legitimate rights, and sometimes those rights come into conflict with each other. The character of the Western Cape is changing and it's changing illegally. The rights of the Western Cape people are literally being trampled on and rather than preventing this abuse, the national government is all but encouraging it. Why? Because South Africa isn't a country which actually believes in non-racialism. So instead, it is a country which believes in African nationalism. The majority of South Africans believe that South Africa belongs to Africans and by this, they mean black Africans. Other races are at best tolerated and at worst are subject to the relentless racial abuse which very few are willing to call out as the racism which it truly is. 371 years ago, Jan van Riewijk and 90 others landed in Cape Town and established a settlement. Today, this act would be illegal, but in 1652, it was not. He acted within the laws of his time. Despite this, the many coloured and white descendants who can trace their lineage back 15 generations to these early settlers are still vilified, called land thieves and told, told to go home. In contrast, over the last few years, nearly one million people have broken the law and illegally settled land in the Western Cape. They are quite literally land thieves, but nobody would dare to use this term. Helen Zilla is still regularly lambasted for having had the audacity to use the word refugees more than a decade ago. The truth is that ordinary Western Cape people are furious about this illegal encroachment on the historical territory, which has irreparably harmed their environment, 
robbed them of resources, increased crime levels, and in conjunction with government policy, greatly disadvantaged them in the workforce. 30% of the current Western Cape population was not born here. Those migrating to the province do so in the pursuit of a better life. And there is nothing wrong with this whatsoever. I'm certainly not going to judge anyone for wanting to move to the Western Cape. For the record, I am one of the 30%. Those who take responsibility for their own future should be applauded and not condemned. But they must do so legally. Illegal land invasions extract a huge toll from the communities they affect. And it simply is not fair on those who are already here legally. At the referendum party, we propose, subject to the will of the Western Cape people, that the Western Cape closes its border with South Africa and implements strict immigration protocols which are non-racial and in line with international norms. Regardless of their race, all people must be welcome to come to the Western Cape, but they must do so legally and in a manner which enhances the quality of life for existing Western Cape citizens, as opposed to causing them harm and distress. Our purpose at the referendum party is to create the conditions which will allow the Western Cape people to fulfil their potential, which will then result in the creation of a first world country at Africa's southern tip. This is only possible through Cape independence. If you'd like to find out more about the Referendum Party, then please visit our website at www.referendumparty.org or follow us on social media at, at Vote Referendum. Thank you. That is crazy, ladies and gentlemen. That is really, really crazy. Does this guy really think that uh, uh, he's going to be successful? But would the black masses in South Africa and uh, funny politicians who keep promoting and enriching themselves they're promoting an agenda at the detriment of their own people and they do not even know hear what this guy just said you think that he's kidding no he's not kidding he's dead serious and he got the finances he got the, the, the backings of a whole lot of people who want to see uh, a white only state exist and of course remember i just i did drop a vlog about orania and uh, the clip phone thing these are people that can gladly move to that part of South Africa and create a different state. Is it going to happen? With the mindset of these current black South Africans, with that mindset, they don't even know that they are being distracted and something far dangerous is happening that this whole illegal immigrants thing, Nigerian, this Mozambique, this Zimbabwe, this, it's crazy. It's really, really crazy and it's very, very dangerous for that country. Now, I want you to leave a comment and let me know. Let's chime in as Africans. Do you see this Phil Gregg as a threat? And do you see this manifesting, coming into fruition? Let's say 10, 20, 30 years from today. Because the more people will come in into that part of South Africa, they will issue them residency and they will be there for like maybe five ten years and then they will have their referendum and all of them would of course they are going to vote they will say yes man that's my time man i i i, I cry inside because the spirit of pan-africanism is dead with our black brothers and sisters in south africa but i do hope that something changes and you just stop this agenda from manifesting stay blessed man have a good day